to President Novak, who has also delivered a truly wonderful message. And I extend my greetings to all of you delegates to the 2022nd World Science Forum. And I'm also delighted that UNESCO is also represented here and represented here by our sister from South Africa. It is a great privilege for me to address you at the start of this most historic event, the first World Science Forum to be hosted on the African continent. As Africans, we are truly delighted for this honor that has been bestowed on us to host this forum in the beautiful city of Cape Town. I do extend the warmest of South African welcomes to all delegates, delegates who come from, as I heard, 118 countries, and especially to those who have come from those countries, you are well welcomed to South Africa and to our beautiful city, Cape Town. Please feel at home. Make this your home away from home. Welcome to South Africa. Today, science more than ever is called upon to assist humanity in responding to the key challenges of our time, including disease, climate change, as well as food insecurity. We therefore need to ensure that this forum will not only be a platform for vibrant debate and discussion, but will also lead to concrete actions, suggestions and solutions that harness science as an instrument for social justice. The theme of your forum, Science for Social Justice, is well chosen and I believe that it should guide the deliberations that you are going to have. And we have already had really truly wonderful insights that have been delivered by colleagues who have just left the stage. This theme expresses our conviction that inequality within and between countries is neither just nor sustainable. This event will inspire concerted global action for science to challenge and address inequality, injustice, poverty, environmental destruction, and marginalization. This is what I hope your forum is going to be able to do. By hosting this forum, South Africa is demonstrating its strong commitment to international cooperation in science. Science progresses when nations work together. We've done over time. And these are instruments, capabilities that can be mobilized for great strength in a variety of ways, including investment in science for social justice. Thirdly, we have our collective will and determination to ensure that science makes a difference by informing policy, policy that will create a more just and equal world. I look forward to the following the progress, to following the progress of this forum over the coming days and to the declaration that you will adopt on Friday. I hope that it will set out a focused and concerted action plan 
for partnership that will put science at the service of society. And in this regard, I want to challenge this forum to critically consider the following five key questions set for the forum's debates and to respond with clear and firm proposals. Firstly, what role should science play in protecting and enhancing human dignity and in fighting poverty, also fighting the unemployment that is so perverse in many countries, as well as the crushing inequality that we witness all over the world. For example, the inequality in access to vaccines during the COVID-19 pandemic was a gross violation, I would say, of human rights and contributed to further loss of life. The global scientific community demonstrated the value of cooperation in responding with unprecedented agency to produce COVID-19 vaccines. Yet, the benefits of that extraordinary scientific work did not benefit all of humanity equally. This experience has informed South Africa's development of a national vaccine manufacturing program, which includes a partnership with the World Health Organization through hosting the mRNA technology transfer hub here in Cape Town. I was delighted to see the people who are working on this program exhibiting outside there. This is part of a broader effort by African countries to produce the vaccines and other pharmaceuticals that the continent's people need. It was during this pandemic that we found that inequality was exacerbated, but it was also inequality in getting access. We were appalled that the richer developed countries in the northern part of the world tended to hoard vaccines largely for themselves and for their citizens in the beginning to the exclusion of people in other parts of the world, particularly people in developing economy countries. And this manifested itself in the ugliest of ways, in that some of those countries hoarded the vaccines which were way beyond the numbers of their own population. And it was only after concerted urging and advocacy from us and various leaders in on the African continent and other parts of the world that they started releasing some of those. Now, some of us found that to be a great injustice. Yes, a lot of money was thereafter quite raised to acquire vaccines, but in the beginning, the inequity that ensued was quite troubling. My second question to you as a forum is what role should science play to enable a just climate transition that will enable us to minimize the social and economic impact and to secure the livelihoods of those most vulnerable to climate change? Minister Dr. Zimande had already touched on this. Innovation and green technology must be at the forefront of our response to this challenge and must enable developing economies to exploit new growth opportunities in this regard. This is part of the motivation for South Africa's significant investment in developing a hydrogen economy, which will be presented also at this forum. I'm delighted that the African Academy of Sciences has embraced the Energy Innovation Challenge. 
My third question is how can we ensure the contribution of African science is recognized as a global resource that is part of the global response to global challenges? It is fitting that the World Science Forum coincides with a special ceremony to celebrate the start of the construction of the Global Kilometer Array radio telescope hosted here in South Africa. The SKA is one of our examples of African-led science excellence on the global stage. And I want to appreciate very much Dr. Sudip Parikh's uh, remarks in this regard and also the manner in which he believes that young people from the Northern Cape will be learning a great deal from this effort. And yes, indeed, I'm able to share with you, I've been reading your scientific magazines on a monthly basis for years, and you'll be pleased to know that I'm a great follower of the work that you do in America. We should also recall how the importance of investment in African science as a global resource was demonstrated during the COVID-19 pandemic when many African scientists played a leading role in the fight against the virus. The work in genomic surveillance, for example, contributed significantly to the international understanding of the mutation of the virus. My Fourth question is, what role can science play in reinforcing multilateralism as well as global solidarity, which is under threat in the face of rising geopolitical tensions? If science is a universal language that does not tolerate discrimination, then we need much more science in diplomacy as well. Knowledge is a global good that we must employ to bring nations closer together. My fifth and final question is, how do we transform the nature of scientific enterprise, making science more reflective of the society that we want? We must ensure greater transparency and sharing in the scientific enterprise. We need to make open science a reality and maintain an uncompromising position on research, integrity, and ethics as well. The use of science for social justice requires committed international cooperation. This World Science Forum could, therefore, not come at a more appropriate and important time. I do want to thank the World Science Forum partners for entrusting South Africa with this responsibility. And I want to congratulate Minister Nzimande and Professor Freund on the steering committee's success in compiling a relevant and thought-provoking program. My appreciation goes to all who contributed to the forum's organization. Minister Nzibane and Dr. Freund, you've really done a fantastic job to bring together 118 countries in a forum such as this, and I believe that other people could be watching this being streamed around the world. It's a phenomenal achievement, and I therefore want to congratulate you for a job well done. Well done indeed. And I do want to assure President Katalin Novak, as the esteemed patron of the World Science Forum, of our continued support and commitment to continue working with the World Science Forum partnership to ensure the proud legacy of this 
World Science Forum and that it will endure and continue beyond Cape Town. I would like to conclude with the words of former President Nelson Mandela, the father of our nation in South Africa, who said, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is the, what difference we have made to the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life that we lead. What matters is not the fact that we have participated in the World Science Forum here in Cape Town and that we are scientists and that we are learned and clever people, but rather what will we do as a consequence to improve the lives of others, making our world a more just world, a world where we can enable people to lead their lives happily and meet their needs. I am confident that this World Science Forum will contribute to the difference that humanity seeks and that what humanity needs. As the scientists of our world, you have this great opportunity, but you also have this great responsibility. And this few days as you gather here, it is on your shoulders to execute that responsibility so that the scientific knowledge that you have is employed to making this world a better place. I wish you good luck in your deliberations and thank you very much. And once again, welcome to South Africa. All right, so there you have President Sir Ramaphosa delivering the keynote opening address at the World Science Forum, which is um, taking place in Cape Town. The president making the point that it is the first time the World Science Forum has been hosted in Africa. He said that science has been called on to assist humanity in key challenges, challenges of disease, climate change, food sustainability, and essentially making the point uh, that many African scientists took a lead, uh, the genomics uh, work that was done during COVID-19, and that Africa should not be forgotten, reiterating uh, that he and other scientists from Africa were appalled uh, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first produced, that many rich nations hoarded them and didn't distribute them at first, making a very clear point uh, that he's hoping this conference affirms Africa's crucial role in science globally. But of course, um, this is also, I think, the very first uh, public address we've seen from the president in the last five days uh, before Thursday. Uh, Wednesday night, of course, is when the Pala Pala report was released. And then on Thursday, uh, we heard the news that there was a very strong possibility that the president would be resigning. Of course, things have changed quite a lot since then, and it's quite clear that the president uh, is resuming his duties as leader of South Africa and is taking that report on review. So that's uh, what we have from Cape Town. Do stay with us.